Good evening. Welcome to the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education meeting for May 22nd, 2023. Can I have a motion going to executive session to discuss matters related to the employment history of particular pedagogical employees, the nurses' collective bargaining agreements, and matters made exempt under federal law and Educational Rights and Privacy Act? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Can I have a motion to go back into public session? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Good evening, everyone. Sorry for starting late. Um, welcome to the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education meeting for May 22nd, 2023. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence for our armed forces and those in our community that have lost loved ones, especially the father of Dustin Almutano, the father-in-law of Marissa, Maria Bonagorio, and the father-in-law of Don Kemsky. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Thank you. Ron, this is the start of our celebratory time, isn't it? Yes, we have a special night. Welcome to everyone joining us this evening to celebrate our colleagues, to celebrate family, friends. It's just so wonderful to have such a large audience here tonight to celebrate some really distinguished educators across our schools and district. So I'd like to begin. We have a very special performance for you this evening. We invited our middle school orchestra here under the direction of Ms. Morrison. We're really, Ms. Morrison, and we're really, really excited to hear them play one of my favorite songs. For anyone who's seen The Greatest Showman, you may recognize this piece, but at this time I'm going to turn it over to our very talented middle school orchestra.
That was absolutely incredible. Wow, thank you. Thank you to our middle school orchestra, Ms. Morrison. Brilliant, as always, thank you. Good evening to members of our Board of Education, my colleagues from the various schools and central administration, friends and family of our honorees, and lastly, our distinguished faculty who will be recommended for tenure this evening. Please know that I'm going to invite you up here. There are going to be a lot of photo opportunities for your family to take. However, all the nice words and everything that I say and the wonderful things that you've accomplished throughout your journey here in Yorktown will not be official until this group, our Board of Education, takes action on it. So make sure you stick around for that part of this evening. That's the most important part. Um, I get to recommend, but certainly our Board of Education gets to accept or, or discuss the recommendations further. But for this group, there is no discussion because you're absolutely brilliant. You're wonderful in every regard. And today we gather here to celebrate an, an incredible achievement and a mark, a significant milestone in your career here in the district. It's with great pleasure and my most heartfelt congratulations that I stand before you tonight to acknowledge your extraordinary achievements over these last three or four years and to recommend you for tenure. Tenure is not a title or a formality, nor is it an endpoint. Tenure is earned through a grueling and rigorous process that demands your very best each day. In fact, in the Yorktown Central School District, this will provide you some insights into our expectations for anyone we recommend for tenure. It's a rigorous four-year process. There are at least 12 formal observations that take place and dozens of informal observations. We have annual evaluations we look at the contributions to the school, to the school community, any leadership role that the individual has taken on, and there are just so many criteria that we look at before we make the really, really serious decision as to whether or not we'll recommend an individual for tenure in the Yorktown Central School District. Now, our honorees this evening have fulfilled each of these items at the highest level of excellence. Through their teaching, they've instilled a love for learning, fostered critical thinking, and nurtured intellectual growth. Their dedication to our students extends beyond the classroom, as many have taken on active roles within the school community that are well outside of the role for which they were hired. They've mentored colleagues. They've been champions of students. And in their relatively short time in our district, they have left such an important mark on so many of us. Before we move further into the celebration, I'd like to just take a quick moment to acknowledge the families who are seated here. The work that we do in education is really difficult to leave behind at the school door. We bring a lot home with us, and our teachers do that. And it undoubtedly takes a toll on families the commitment that families have to make as your loved ones planning for a lesson or grading papers that weekend or has another responsibility at the school. I'm married to a school teacher. Around report card time, I know that I can't have dinner at the dining room table because that's where we set up for report cards and we lay out student work there. And I'm sure that that's not just in my house. So I just want to take a moment to acknowledge, recognize, and applaud the families of the honorees tonight. We appreciate you sharing your loved ones with us. We cherish the work that they do. We appreciate the work that we do. And we thank you for giving them the opportunity to do that work all in in our school district. I also would like to acknowledge all of the faculty and staff from across our many schools here tonight. 
I see so many familiar faces. I see all of our principals, and I appreciate you all being here, our assistant principals, so many of our teachers and teaching assistants and staff throughout the district and my, and my central office colleagues, certainly. Thank you for mentoring our new colleagues, for supporting their growth, supporting their development in our school district, ultimately helping them to be the very best for our students because the one thing that we all agree on is nothing matters more than our students. And colleagues in the room who are more experienced and who have achieved tenure, I just want to say thank you for all of your work and all of your support, and I would like to offer you a round of applause as well. At this time, we'll transition to the tenure presentation of each candidate. Uh, before we do that, I would like to invite the district PTSA president, Ron Fidelli, to the front of the room where he'll distribute congratulatory flower to each of our honorees this evening. What I'm going to do is I'm going to invite, hello, Ron. Where are we going? Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to call you up by school. One of the beautiful things that I hear about our schools is that they're like families and there's such a connectedness and, and such a attachment and, and just fondness of each other and there's such a collaboration amongst our faculty and staff. So what fitting way than to have you come up as a school to be acknowledged for tenure this evening. So we're going to begin with Brookside School. And I'd like to invite Ms. Christine Breen, Patricia Donlin, and Jennifer Travis to the front. I don't believe Ashley Iannacone's here this evening, but I'd like to invite um, Christine Breen, Patricia Donlin, and Jennifer Travis to the front. So we're gonna go in alphabetical order. Christine, you're up first. <laughs> so, Christine, you'll come stand right next to me. Got a lot written here about you. <laughs> I'm pleased to recommend Ms. Christine Breen for tenure this evening as a library media specialist. Mrs. Breen has been an excellent addition to the Brookside faculty since her arrival in 2019. She has consistently demonstrated a passion for her own professional growth and the growth of her students. She uses her creative talents to learn about her students and apply pedagogical practices to meet their needs. Ms. Breen skillfully insists a love and appreciation of reading in her students as they perform a high degree of project-based group work. In fact, one of the lessons that I stopped in for, I believe it was kindergarten, was it first grade or kindergarten? Okay. First grade was that lesson that I'm referring to. And what I saw was nothing short of spectacular in the library to hear five and six year old children negotiating group work and roles and assignments is, was quite impressive to see. What I'll add is that Ms. Breen instills the joy of working together. It's not about the technology. It's not about the concept of eSteam, although Ms. Breen has been a champion of our work in eSteam at Brookside, specifically with projects such as Balloons Over Brookside, the parade and the project. Uh, she's had an integral role in the one school, one book program in the building. And she, what I think I find most impressive is her ability to merge a love of literature with technology. And that's quite impressive. And I am so pleased and honored to recommend Ms. Breen to the Board of Education this evening for your consideration for tenure. Congratulations. <laughs> I also have one of these for you. I'm honored to recommend Ms. Patricia Donlin, Trish, uh, as a certified teaching assistant uh, for tenure. Ms. Donlin joined the Brookside staff also in September of 2019 and spent her first three years helping the building navigate through a very challenging pandemic. 
Throughout her time at Brookside, Ms. Donlin has been so instrumental in all of the programs in which she has worked. She spent the last three years in the grade three ICT program. She helped manage routines of the classroom and she provided support, and, and not just support, but really highly skilled support to the students in the class. And what I would say is, in the words of Mr. Casarini, I, I pulled this from him, he writes, what impresses me most about Mrs. Donlin is that she assumes every additional task that has been given to her and performs them with a high degree of professionalism. This has included an active role on the arrival and dismissal team, and anyone who has worked, and I'll add this, anyone who has worked arrival or dismissal when it's pouring rain outside will know that that is a labor of love. That really is something that you're passionate about safety and getting our children in safe, because when it's raining and you're out there, and you've got a whole day left ahead of you, and I'm looking at some of my colleagues as they nod to this. Many of you have experienced this, and Trish does that so well, and we're just so happy to have her here in the Yorktown Central School District, and I'm honored to recommend Ms. Patricia Donlin to the board this evening for consideration for tenure. Trish, congratulations. <laughs> Jen. I am so honored to recommend Ms. Jennifer Travis for tenure this evening as a school psychologist. Ms. Travis joined the district initially as a psychologist and she worked in the PPS office and, and had various assignments throughout the district. She transitioned to Brookside permanently in October of 2022 and one of the things that if you have a conversation with Ms. Travis about why she got into this career I think what you'll hear is that she loves helping students to feel better about themselves and to grow into healthy adults. She shows that commitment to her children each day in this role. At Brookside, Ms. Travis is the CSE chairperson, IST chairperson, and routinely shows leadership as a member of the clinical team. She's an excellent communicator, is just somebody who you're just so happy as a superintendent to have on your staff because the versatility, the commitment to children, the child-centered educator and professional that she is. So I am honored to recommend Ms. Travis to the board this evening for consideration for tenure. Congratulations. <laughs> if we can give our Brookside colleagues one final round of applause. <laughs> Mohansic is going to be the next school that we recognize, and Mohansic has the largest number of tenure honorees this evening with nine candidates being recommended for tenure tonight. Some of our schools only have two candidates, and. and some have nine. So I would like to invite our colleagues from Mohansic School to the front of the room. Oh, I'm sorry that you already advanced it. Very good. I'd like to invite Ms. Sarah Bauman, Ms. Roseanne Brackett, Ms. Jennifer Choden, Ms. Lauren Cox, Ms. Susan Knapp, Ms. Miranda McGill, Ms. Daniela Salmon, Ms. Danielle Shine, and Ms. Amy Yanarelli, who I don't believe is joining us this evening. So I'm in alphabetical order. Oh, you <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific. So Sarah, I'm gonna ask you to. I am so pleased to recommend Ms. Sarah Bauman for tenure as an elementary education teacher in the Yorktown Central School District. Ms. Bauman began her career in the district as a leave replacement. And after a successful run at KIPP Academy, we were delighted to welcome her to the Yorktown Central School District. Currently, Ms. Bauman is a kindergarten teacher where she continues to have great success with her students. She spends many hours working with families, collaborating with the clinical team, working with her grade level colleagues, and introducing new ideas to the faculty. Her classroom is one of the things that you'll know, you'll know when you're in Ms. Bauman's classroom. It's bright, it's colorful, it's a happy place to be for children. And within the walls of that classroom, there's excellent instruction happening. 
the time that Ms. Bauman spends planning her lessons is evident. She attends to every detail, even the smallest details, to ensure that student learning needs are being met. And in the words of a parent who sent the administration an email about Ms. Bauman, I quote, Ms. Bauman is warm, enthusiastic, and extremely positive. Her communication with parents was very thorough, making expectations, schedules, and assignments clear. The way that she spoke about the students in her classroom and all written communication made it so evident how much she truly cares for the students and valued them as members of the class community. I'm honored to recommend Ms. Bauman to our board for consideration for tenure this evening. Thank you, Sarah. Roseanne? I am honored to recommend Ms. Roseanne Brackett for tenure as a certified teaching assistant to the Yorktown Central School District. Ms. Brackett currently serves as a science CTA at Mohansic, where she collaborates with classroom teachers to support the science curriculum, prepares lessons, works closely with students. She is excellent in her communication skills. She provides students with a hands-on approach to science. She builds that love of science in children. Uh, she's extremely organized, and I think you have to be, just given the versatility of her role and the demands of her role. And she supports four different grade levels and nearly two dozen teachers. In addition, Ms. Brackett supervises lunch and recess. And I'll tell you, when I walk into the cafeteria, it's a rare sight to not see Ms. Brackett either buttering a child's bagel or helping them open up a package or, or do something to just make someone's day a little bit better. Um, so she's willing to support, Ms. Brackett's willing to support our school and our district in any way that she can. And based on her excellent performance, and her approach that is so collaborative and, and her high standards of professionalism and excellence, I'm honored to recommend Ms. Brackett to the board this evening for tenure. I am honored to recommend Ms. Jennifer Choden for tenure as a special education teacher. Since her first year at Mohansic, Ms. Choden has been an outstanding, hardworking, and talented special education teacher. She sets very high standards for herself. She sets high standards for her students and provides them with all the scaffolds and support to meet those high standards. Ms. Choden's first year, she was assigned as a kindergarten ICT special education teacher where she excelled and did a phenomenal job. She worked closely with the classroom teacher to ensure that student needs were being met. And since, she's assigned to our 1212 kindergarten first grade program. And I also want to reflect the words of a parent email that we received that reads, you were the first teacher that my son met at Mohansic. You immediately made a connection with our son. Last year was a turning point for him. Something clicked and we owe it all to you. You truly made a difference for him. And for that, we are grateful. Every child deserves to have a Miss Choden at one point in their academic career. I proudly recommend Miss Jennifer Choden to the board for tenure. So parents, if, if you're wondering, gee, um, should I write that nice email? Should I, should I send that email about a teacher? Who knows? It may get read on tenure night for them. I'm honored to recommend Ms. Lauren Cox as a tenured teacher for, tenure candidate for English as a New Language. Ms. Cox has been an outstanding addition to our district and to the Mohansic faculty specifically. She brings a wealth of expertise in child and adolescent language acquisition best practices. She works collabor collaboratively with the ENL department across the grade levels, K through 12, to ensure that student learning needs and programmatic requirements are being met. And prior to being an ENL teacher, Ms. Cox was actually an elementary classroom teacher. And I do believe that that experience has really translated well into her role in ENL and being an ENL teacher. 
She holds parent workshops, makes presentations to faculty, and she has just taken an active role in the school community, the ENL committee, the equity committee, in addition to attending regional workshops to ensure that she remains current in best practices. So I am honored to recommend Ms. Cox for tenure this evening. I am honored to recommend Ms. Susan Knapp for, for tenure as a certified teaching assistant in the Yorktown Central School District. Uh, one thing that you'll know immediately upon meeting Ms. Knapp is she's kind, caring, and just a wonderful person to know. That I think is universally agreed upon. In her first year in Mohansic, she served as a two to one aide in our 1212 program. She enjoyed working closely with the two students who, with whom she was supporting and the students had just such a wonderful positive experience and that's largely due to Susan's efforts. Ms. Knapp truly enjoys being part of the kindergarten team. She finds joy in every aspect of her day. Um, she's formed a great, great partnership with her, with her teacher in her classroom. I'm looking around, I, um, it's worth noting though that in addition to being a CTA in a kindergarten classroom, that Miss Knapp is there wherever you need her, whatever the role may be, and Mrs. Berry can certainly attest to that at Mohansic. She takes time to listen, to speak with children, to work with them, to help them find a solution with proper support, but also to help them arrive at solutions on their own. The students are given such love, such attention, such joy, and I just take a lot of pride in recommending Miss Susan Knapp for tenure to the board this evening. So it is my pleasure to recommend Ms. McGill for Ms. Miranda McGill for tenure as a certified teaching assistant in the Yorktown Central School District. Ms. McGill is a highly skilled, very talented, and engaging person who has really demonstrated such a outgoing, positive spirit within the school. She's been an asset in the building. She's been wonderful to work with. Um, just one personal story is whenever we were outside during the COVID days of opening school doors, the energy that Miss McGill would bring at that hour was something that I couldn't match. And most people I don't know who can match that. And that's just something that really resonated with me during a time when students needed that energy and that excitement to come to school. You were there to provide it. So uh, Miss McGill actually comes to us with a very interesting background. Uh, her experiences uh, include a um, two master's degree, one from MIT in Cambridge, one from the University of Manchester, uh, postgraduate work and at the Royal um, Institute of uh, British Architects. She's been a guest lecturer for MIT. She has just done so many wonderful things and we're honored that she's come to give back to her school community and be part of the Yorktown Central School District family. It's a special place and it's a special place because we have such wonderful professionals working in our schools, and Miranda epitomizes that. This year, Ms. McGill was assigned to be a kindergarten CTA and has been wonderful in this role. She clearly loves teaching. She has a passion for teaching, for working with children, a wonderful, wonderful way about her that children gravitate to. And I am absolutely honored to recommend Ms. McGill for tenure this evening. It is with great pleasure and enthusiasm that I recommend Ms. Daniela Salmon for tenure. Ms. Salmon is an engaging, energetic, kind, and caring person who has demonstrated her dedication to not just Mohansic, but to our entire school community. She's someone who has a big heart, a very big heart. When you walk into the Mohansic cafeteria again, the interactions that you see are just so authentic, so genuine, and immediately when, when someone says, what does it look like to really, really care about children? I would point right to Daniela and say right there, that's what it looks like. 
And I must say that Miss Salmon has just an incredible ability to just change the trajectory of a day for someone, whether it's with an upbeat, energetic comment or a smile or a joke. It's something that I certainly appreciate in our interactions and I know our students as well. She's very attentive, attentive to student needs. She implements what's asked of her by the teachers, by the staff. She's insightful, observant. Great suggestions come from Ms. Salmon quite often and based on her excellent performance and just high standards of excellence, I'm just honored to recommend Ms. Danielle Salmon for tenure this evening. It truly is my pleasure to recommend Ms. Danielle Shine for tenure as an elementary education teacher in the Yorktown Central School District. Ms. Shine has the characteristics that we seek, all of the characteristics that we seek in an educator. Not only does she employ excellent pedagogical practices, she's warm, engaging, child-centered. Everything that you'd want for your child's classroom experience can be found in Ms. Shine's class. What I will say is what impressed me most in my visits to Ms. Shine's classroom is this balance between independence that the students show with a high level of academic rigor and academic demands. I was very impressed by what I saw during any of my visits to Ms. Shine's classroom, and I think you would be too. And for that, I'm proud to recommend Ms. Shine for tenure this evening. And again, what I just want to convey directly to you, Danielle, is your ability to build a classroom community and have the children just get along and work is something, and work together is something that really impressed me. And I appreciate you doing that for our children. And I look forward to you doing that for our children for many years to come. So to our Board of Education, I'm honored to recommend Ms. Shine for your consideration for tenure this evening. The next school to be recognized is Crompon School. And at Crompon, we have five candidates who are being considered or recommended for tenure. I don't believe all five are joining us this evening, but I'd like to invite uh, Ms. Tara Daly, Ms. Courtney Hyman, Ms. Christina Kenny, Ms. Jenna Murray, and Ms. Nixa Rennie to the front of the room. Tara, come on up. I am honored to recommend Ms. Tara Daly for tenure in the Yorktown Central School District. Ms. Daly has been a grade five general education teacher at Crompon for the last three years. And over these last three years, again, Ms. Daly has demonstrated all of the characteristics that we want in our educators. Ms. Daly has demonstrated professionalism, a very, very, very vast repertoire of pedagogical practices, a devotion to learning, and most importantly, a commitment to children. In her role as a general education teacher at Crompond, she works closely with students and families to ensure the success of all individuals. She believes in that homeschool connection, and Ms. Daly willingly collaborates with her colleagues as she plans and implements lessons for students. 
but Ms. Daly is a quiet leader. And she willingly shares her work with the fifth grade team, and she's always willing to help a colleague, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or whether it's in a larger setting, she's willing to assist. She's eager, eager to ask questions, she reflects on practice, and she's open to trying new pedagogical techniques. One of the things that I'll tell you when, when I visited Ms. Daly's classroom, one of the most, I think, impressive things that I saw was her ability to just have 20 some odd children working in different areas on different topics and be able to just immediately engage the children in conversation at every group like she never walked away from them. And every child feels seen in the classroom, every child feels heard, and that's really a testament to the classroom culture and, and the classroom climate that you've built. You recognize, Ms. Daly recognizes the importance of caring and respecting and appreciating each child for their individuality. And these practices will most assuredly continue well beyond tenure. And so Ms. Daly, I am honored to recommend you to our Board of Education for tenure this evening. <laughs> it is with great pleasure that I recommend Ms. He Courtney Hyman for tenure in the Yorktown Central School District. Ms. Hyman has been a general education teacher at Crompon School for the last four years, three years in grade four, and the past year Ms. Hyman joined the fifth grade team at Crompon. And over the last four years, she's demonstrated, again, all of the characteristics that we hope our, all of our educators will have. She is devoted to our students, devoted to the school, to the district. In fact, um, Ms. Hyman even stepped out of her teaching role to take on the coaching of a varsity athletic team for us. And that's absolutely remarkable for one of our teachers to take on that role beyond the role for which she was hired. Ms. Hyman also excels throughout Crompond. She's a member of so many different teams, the Math Task Force, the Science Committee, Social Committee, Garden Committee, ESTEAM Family Night Committee, Literacy Committee. She has taken on so much beyond the classroom commitments. And what I will tell you is that if you ever visited Ms. Hyman's classroom, you'd be impressed just in that part of her role, how well she's able to meet the needs of the learners in her classroom how sensitive, kind, caring, nurturing she is to the children in her classroom. I know that was my experience, and it's the experience of a fortunate group of children who get to spend 182 days in that classroom. So I am honored and delighted to recommend Ms. Hyman to the board this evening for tenure. It's with great pleasure that I recommend Ms. Christina Kenny for tenure this evening as a certified teaching assistant. And as a certified teaching assistant, or you'll often hear the acronym CTA, as a CTA in our school district, Ms. Kenny has played a vital role in the school community. She has been part of the 812 classroom as a one-to-one. -one. She transitioned to the special education program aid in an ICT setting, and she's presently in our 1211 model. One of the things that I will tell you about Ms. Kenny is no matter what classroom she's in, there is this pleasant, happy, very upbeat person working with children. And there's this joy that just you see. And it's wonderful to experience. And it's something that you just want to put in a jar and say, here, let's spread this around so that every child can experience just that joy, that support, that authenticity that's so important for each of our students to experience. And, and Chrissy or Christina brings that to our students every day at Crown Pond. And we appreciate her and we thank her for all of her work that she does in our school district. And I'd like to um, say thank you first and foremost for everything that you do for our students. And I'm honored to recommend Ms. Kenny for tenure to the Board of Education. Congratulations. <laughs>
Nick said, come on over. <laughs> so I am so honored to recommend Ms. Nixa Rennie for a tenure in the Yorktown Central School District as a certified teaching assistant. Ms. Rennie is, I don't know quite how to describe the joy that Ms. Rennie brings to Crompond and to the students, but I think anyone who knows her knows the joy that you feel just being in her presence. Ms. Rennie's always upbeat, always positive, always just great to be around, and how fortunate for students to spend days with you and to, be, to have that experience every day. So now one of the things that you may not know about Ms. Rennie, Ms. Rennie, is it accurate? that um, I hear that e-steam is your favorite subject. Is that true? <laughs> Ms. Rennie truly is such a role model. She supports e our students in their e-steam work and, and just does such a phenomenal job at that. But again, Ms. Rennie is one of those people you can call on for anything. You can ask for her assistance no matter what the task is, how large, how small, she'll do it. She'll do it with a smile, and she'll say thank you after she has completed the role. Just a terrific person to have in our school building, our school district, and, and truly, truly wonderful, most importantly, for the children. So to our Board of Education, I am just so honored to recommend Ms. Nixa Rennie for tenure this evening as a certified teaching assistant. And if we can have the Crompon staff come together, and we'll do this for Brookside as well. I don't think we did this for Brookside, and we'll just get a quick photo. Dr. Roberts. Yeah. Mr. Avdak, if you'd like to go into the picture as well. What's that? OK. <laughs> I, I thought I read architect somewhere. OK, I thought, I thought architect. I might be wrong. Engineer. Engineer? Was it engineer? Engineer. Okay. okay. And Ms. Rennie's favorite subject is e-STEAM because she is professionally trained as an engineer. And so that's where her background comes in and that's where her contribution to our e-STEAM program are so incredible. This evening, we'll... Yes, they all are so wonderful. All of our staff are just absolutely wonderful. This evening, we're going to be recognizing two colleagues from Mildred E. Strang Middle School. So at this time, I'd like to invite Mr. Richard Anderson and Ms. Jennifer Sperano to the front. Of the room. <laughs> I'm delighted to recommend Mr. Richard Anderson for tenure as a science teacher in the Yorktown Central School District. Mr. Anderson's completing his fourth year of his probationary period as a teacher in grades seven and eight. Mr. Anderson has consistently created a safe and challenging learning environment for the students of MESMS. Mr. Anderson shares his love of science with his students, and if you visit the classroom, uh, as I have, you'll see an intensity for science instruction that is really unmatched and, and quite impressive, actually. Uh, he helps students to develop interactive and hands-on activities to increase student understanding. He engages students in higher order thinking, so there's so many different levels of questions that Mr. Anderson asks, and he does such a, a remarkable job of getting at those higher order questions. He provides clear directions, clear expectations, clear objectives in his lessons. He's innovative, he's creative. He really uses inquiry to guide his instruction, which is just so wonderful to have in a science teacher. Mr. Anderson also serves as a co-coach of our Science Olympiad team. And with all of that said, it is my pleasure to recommend Mr. Anderson to the board this evening for tenure.
כן. It's, it's my pleasure to recommend Ms. Jennifer Sperano for tenure as she completes her fourth year of her probationary period as a speech and language therapist, speech and language teacher. Ms. Sperano works closely with all of the other service providers to ensure that student IEP needs and learning needs are being met. Ms. Sperano has created a social skills group that focuses on pragmatic language skills. The group helps students to practice their social skills, recognize cues when having conversations with others. Her lessons incorporate so many different resources and are quite engaging. I will tell you that, so, I'm gonna, okay. So Ms. Sperano, Ms. Sperano was on Wheel of Fortune. She was a contestant on Wheel of Fortune, and I believe Ms. Sperano won. So Ms. Sperano won on Wheel of Fortune. So when I visited the class, I think whether it was the following week or a few weeks after that, uh, Ms. Sperano did a great job of incorporating the Wheel of Fortune game. All the students were aware of it. All the students had watched her win on Wheel of Fortune. And that was a show my mother grew up watching for many years. So that's a show that's near and dear to my heart. 7 o'clock was Jeopardy. 7.30 was Wheel of Fortune every night for so many years in our house. And she incorporated the Wheel of Fortune game into a lesson that I just stopped in to see. And the time that it took to create this lesson is something that I can only imagine for one class period. But then when you go back again, you see another lesson that looks like it took equally as much time to develop. And then you go back again and you see something again that strikes you as amazing. And that's what Ms. Sperano has done. She participates in so many different activities within the school building and is just an integral member of the Mildred E. Strang Middle School faculty and staff. And for those reasons and so many other reasons, I'm honored to recommend Ms. Sperano for tenure this evening to the board. I'm now delighted to recognize our colleagues from Yorktown High School who are being recommended for tenure this evening. I'd like to invite Ms. Kelly DiOrio, Ms. Christian O'Driscoll, Mr. Mike Rubenfeld, and Ms. Danica Zerka. It is with great pleasure that I recommend Ms. Kelly DiOrio for tenure this evening as a mathematics teacher in the Yorktown Central School District. Ms. DiOrio joined the district in September of 2019, and she has successfully taught a wide range of math, specifically math one, two, two honors. I will tell you that I, the class, I, I visited Ms. DiOrio's class and had the opportunity to watch a lesson what we talked about, our discussion, what I enjoyed was the real life connection. Why does this matter? Why is this important? Why should I learn this content? And Ms. DiOrio did a nice job of bringing that to life for our students. She has, she, she's found a great way to engage children in mathematics content. She provides rigorous instruction she uses multiple teaching modalities to meet the needs of students. She's organized, she's skilled, she makes the math come to life, and that's everything that we're seeking in a mathematics teacher at the high school level. She's collegial, she's open to feedback, always looking to get better and always looking to improve. That's also something that we're looking for in our school district, and Ms. DiOrio 
certainly epitomizes that. I'm honored to recommend Ms. Kelly DiOrio for tenure in the Yorktown Central School District. I'm truly honored to recommend Ms. Christian O'Driscoll for tenure as an English teacher in our school district. Ms. O'Driscoll has spent the last three plus school years in our school district refining her craft, creating wonderful English instruction and meaningful English instruction for our students. She has taught many courses and many grade levels in our English program. She currently teaches English 11, 11 ICT, and the Project Advance and Skills classes. However, what impressed me the most when I went into her classroom is the individual support that children get in a larger group setting. The, and, and we discussed this previously, the small group instruction that's happening in a high school setting, it's not always easy to maintain tabs on all of the conversations that are happening. Ms. O'Driscoll can teach a course on it because she just does it so seamlessly. Her ability to check in and out with groups, to monitor progress, to offer suggestions despite just joining the conversation is really special. And for so many reasons, that's what makes Ms. O'Driscoll such a wonderful teacher in our building. She's student-centered, she works hard, she collaborates with her colleagues, she's always seeking to grow and always looking for that feedback to take her practice to the next level. She has a quiet strength to her and is a quiet leader. And most importantly, when you walk into that classroom, you know that you're in a child-centered space. And that's probably one of the best compliments that I can give a high school teacher. For that reason and so many other reasons, I'm honored to recommend Ms. O'Driscoll for tenure in the district. Mike? I'm honored to recommend Mr. Michael Rubenfeld for tenure in the Yorktown Central School District. Mr. Rubenfeld has this dual role. He's working in special education and in mathematics. And believe it or not, when I was teaching, that was actually the same role that I worked in, teaching special education and high school mathematics. So there's a connection on that level. What I will tell you about Mr. Rubenfeld, and I have some prepared remarks here, but what I would tell you is Mr. Rubenfeld has this love of children that you want for your own children. The energy, the excitement, the passion in a math class, bringing the content to life is something that Mr. Rubenfeld does. Whether it's an analogy to sports or it's an analogy to real life, there's an uncanny ability there to connect with children where they are. And now he's involved in so many other areas. You may see Mr. Rubenfeld on the sideline of a football game. You may see Mr. Rubenveld coaching uh, our baseball team or being actively involved in whatever the high school is offering on any given day. He is just such a wonderful asset, not just to the children, not just in the classroom, which is the most important part of his role, but he's such an integral member of the high school team. And we appreciate his efforts and we thank him for that. Mr. Rubenfeld's always looking to improve his practice and you can see that, whether he's reading a journal, whether he's just having a conversation with a colleague about, about his practice, it's truly impressive to see. And for someone who has done that job, seeing someone do it even better than I was able to do that job is remarkable. So Mike, congratulations to you. I'm honored to recommend you for tenure in the Yorktown Central School District. <laughs> I am honored to recommend Danika Zerka for tenure this evening as an English teacher in the Yorktown Central School District. 
What I will tell you, so Ms. Zirka joined the York 10th Central School District in September of 2019. She spent five years in New York City prior, and she has just been such an integral part of the faculty, not just in the English department, but across the school, um, the entire school. She's taught at different levels and different content areas within English. She's part of our ICT teaching team. She really has flourished as an educator. What I will tell you is in visiting Ms. Zirka's classroom, What's most impressive is the passion for literature and the passion for allowing children to express their voice and their perspectives in the classroom and embracing all of the different perspectives that are presented in the classroom. It's something that I thoroughly enjoyed experiencing and, and let alone children get to experience that 182 days in a school year in your class. The instruction that's provided while students do get to express their perspectives and their views, the instruction's very rigorous and there is a level of analysis of text that I found to be very impressive at the high school level. However, the support that was provided to students helped them to reach the high expectations that Ms. Zirka has of her students. She's had such a wonderful impact on her students. I've heard it from students who have had Ms. Zirka in the past, and they really appreciate the impact that she's had on not just their educational journey, but on their lives. So I am honored to recommend Ms. Zirka for tenure in the Yorktown Central School District this evening. <laughs> High school admins, if we can come up for a picture. Congratulations. Before things, oh, actually, I'm just going to ask the tenure candidates to just stick around because we'd like to get a group picture of the Brookside tenure candidates and we'd also like to get one picture of all of our tenure candidates for this evening. But before we do that, we have one more honoree this evening. And I'd like to invite our Director of Technology, Ms. Forsberg, up for a presentation. This recommendation, they're all very special recommendations. Jennifer works with me in my cabinet. She's part of my, an hour central administration leadership team. As our director of technology, Jen's first year was the pandemic shutdown year when we had to go remote. Immediately, we had to pivot our practice to take this thing we called school and make it fully remote. That required devices, internet access, software platforms, training, and so many other details that had to be attended to. So in Jen's first year in the school district, she not only had to navigate a new school district and understanding the roles and, and the systems and policies and procedures, but she also had to transition us into remote learning in a pandemic, and she did a phenomenal job. So my recommendation for tenure for Jen was sealed in 2020 when she took our district. If she can do that, she can do anything I'm gonna ask her to do moving forward, and she has. She has continued to grow our district. I very purposefully put that picture alone, and Brian assisted me with all of this, but that picture alone on that slide, because Yorktown is the home of E-STEAM, but we're the home of E-STEAM 
because we have great teachers in our classrooms and we're the home of East Team because we have a great director of technology who ensures that we have the capabilities, the bandwidth, and all of the resources to make these great ideas that our faculty and staff have happen. So I just want to take a quick moment to just say that although Jen is regarded in just about every circle as the best director of technology in the region, and I say that without mincing words, she is the best out there. What I would say is perhaps Ms. Forsberg's best quality is the person that she is. She's a high character, high integrity professional who supports the advancement of our entire school district. She's an incredible team player and an integral member of our district's leadership team. I value Ms. Forsberg's input on all matters, not only matters that relate to her areas of supervision, because she's just so smart, so thoughtful, and so insightful. To every situation, she brings a balanced perspective that follows logic and reason. And most importantly, her thinking always places children at the forefront of her perspective. For these reasons, and for so many more, I'm just delighted and honored to recommend Ms. Forsberg for tenure as Director of Technology in the Yorktown Central School District. If I can just invite the central administration colleagues to the front of the room, I just we can do a quick picture with Jen. To our tenure candidates this evening, I am just so honored to work with you. I, I stand here, I get to present you all to our Board of Education. I do want to acknowledge the role that your principals have, pay, have played in your development and your growth. Yorktown's home to some of the greatest principals in this region. We know that. We've got five of them here. And I just want to take a moment to acknowledge our five school principals for all of the work that they've done, because you don't get here without our principals. <laughs> and certainly tangentially to our assistant principals and to all of the support within our school buildings. Candidates, congratulations. It's a special night, but as I referenced earlier, this is not the finish line. This is not a destination. This is not where we stay. We need to continue to get better. The analogy that I use at the beginning of the school year with you is 10 days out of 10. We need to give the children our best 10 days out of 10. We, can't, we don't get to have off days. We don't get to have less than perfect days because we're working with children. And we need to give them our best always. And I know you know that, and that's why you're here tonight. So candidates for tenure, Congratulations to you. I'm so proud of you, but it's not official yet. So I'm going to step aside at this point. So can I have a point of order? Yes. Okay. So upon recommendation of the superintendent, a motion that the following be approved. The tenure appointments listed below. Do you have a motion? So moved. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations. Uh, before we continue our meeting, I want to welcome Catalina Tyndall, our newest board member. So welcome, Catalina. Um, we're up to our public comment for agenda items only. And if that nobody signed up, is that correct? OK. So we're going to move right into our superintendent's update.
So uh, I'll be brief on the update because um, uh, I took some time honoring our tenure candidates and well-deserved time, and we're just so impressed by all of the work that they've done in our school district. It's just that 10 day out of 10 mentality that they bring to their work here. I also want to take a moment to say thank you to our school community for their overwhelming support in the school budget vote. We certainly appreciate the outcome and the support, and we certainly are um, pleased with the result. And I'll speak for myself and, and just say that I'm pleased with, with the result and the outcome. I'm very thankful to our community for their overwhelming support of teaching and learning and, and some of the wonderful programs that this budget will be able to bring to our school district for the 23-24 school year. We have just a couple of other items to just talk about. We have end of year calendar coming up. There are two scheduled days when school is closed. We'll be sending out a reminder tomorrow with regard to the calendar. Schools are closed. You'll recall, you'll recall that we amended the school calendar to now reflect a closure on Friday, January, I'm sorry, May 26th. I'm in January. Friday, May 26th, and also schools are closed for Juneteenth on Monday, June 19th. We'll also be clarifying the end of year calendar for each of our schools tomorrow and providing some information with regard to when half days are scheduled at the elementary level, when the testing uh, days start at our middle school and high school and so on. So we will be adding some of that information to an update that we send out tomorrow. <clears throat> our pre-K program continues to move along and it's quite exciting to see the planning that's happening in our pre-K program. As our community is aware, we have 188 seats in our allocation from New York State. We've awarded the pre-K program to the YMCA of Central and Northern Westchester. At this point right now, the registration closes Friday. We have done everything that we can to get the word out. We've worked with the Yorktown News. We've worked with the town. We've worked with the various publications. Obviously, we sent out information to the school community. We've tried to get the information on social media and as, through as many outlets as possible so that everybody in our community who is interested in a pre-K program can have access to the pre-K program. That was very important to me. I know it was important to our board. We didn't want to employ a lottery system. We wanted the largest possible program that we can offer to make sure that everybody in our community who wants access will get that access at no cost to parents. And that's something that is also quite important to note. Parents who require and families who require before care and after care, that information is forthcoming with regard to the wraparound services and the cost for those. But the base day from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. will be at no cost to families. We'll have more information that gets shared with our community next week. The window closes on Friday for registration. And what we'll do, actually it's Thursday, at the end of Thursday, the window closes. We'll analyze how many families or students have expressed interest, how many spots that we have in the program. The program will be held at French Hill, but I also want to clarify that we are doing our best to retain as many of the programs at French Hill that already are there. So there are already two programs that provide support to young children. There's 1010 Recreation and Children's Corner. Our intent is to have them return. We've come up with a plan so that we don't have to disrupt those services to families and to children and to keep YAC in the building and to be able to keep the oxygen program in the building, to keep the music school in the building, to, to allow as many, to keep ASK, Alliance for Safe Kids is a valuable community resource, to keep ASK in the building, those are to te keep our teacher center uh, present and vibrant in the building. Those are, it was a heavy lift to be able to carve out space so that this can work for as many groups as possible, but I do believe we were successful in making that happen. So we look forward to the pre-K program now being added to French Hill, and we will have one of the larger programs in Westchester County right off the bat, which is a terrific thing for our community. At this point, we have about 145 children registered in the program. So we have some room to grow, which is encouraging at, at this rate, assuming that we don't have a huge influx, everyone who expressed interest will be able to have access to the program. So that's an exciting development, but again, more to come at the end of this week, and then certainly next week, more specific information. 
this evening we also have a presentation that is going to be delivered by Western Suffolk BOCES. The district commissioned an enrollment study to better understand the trajectory of our enrollment for the next 10 years. There are many developments that are happening in town. And certainly there's been information that's been provided by the developers. However, we want to verify that information for ourselves and ensure that we have the most accurate and current information so that we can make the smartest decisions with regard to planning facilities, planning for staffing, planning for any other ancillary needs, whether it's transportation, school lunch, or, or whatever the case may be, whether it's an increase in pupil personnel services, staff, and related services. So those are all things we're planning for. So yes, we have been given projections by the, or tentative projections by the developers. I find those to be a little low for what I'm anticipating. We do have Western Suffolk BOCES here, and we have Barbara Graziano on the line. So at this point, there is a PowerPoint presentation that Ms. Graziano is going to share with us an overview for us. And we'll certainly post the study and the report to our website so that it's available for our community to see. And we have posted so many documents to our website. We have posted all curricula to our website. We have posted library databases. So if you'd like to see what books are available in our library, those are all posted. So this will, again, be another study that we post to our website so that the community has the information that we're working off of. So at this point, um, Barbara, can, can Barbara hear us? All right, so Barbara can begin and open the presentation whenever she's ready. Sorry, I couldn't quite catch all the audio here. Barbara, are, are you ready for me to start? Yes, we are. So if I should proceed? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, good evening. I'm Barbara Graziano. I am the um, manager of schools planning and research at Western Suffolk BOCES. And um, as I assume the superintendent just uh, <coughs> Uh, informed you, we have done a demographic and enrollment study for the district this year, so I will present you with the findings. Uh, I'll start by just giving you a little background um, about our Office of School Planning and Research. Since 1985, we've completed more than 1,300 studies for school districts on Long Island, uh, primarily on Long Island and um, in the Hudson Valley region. Um, some Westchester County districts that we have worked with are shown here. Um, and I think we've done almost every um, district in uh, Westchester County. Um, what is involved in a study? Um, so I'll just give you a brief rundown of uh, how we go about it. Uh, first, we research the demographics of the district. And that includes births. Uh, actually, we look at births nationally. Um, uh, by uh, state at the state level, uh, county level, and all the way down to the school district level. Uh, then we also uh, research housing data within the district. We look at look at rates of housing turnover within the district. Um, we look at uh, the proportion of rental versus um, uh, owner occupied housing. Uh, and we also uh, contact the local municipalities and in some cases local developers to find out information on any new housing that may be planned within the district. Uh, then in the, the next one, population, uh, we research a lot of census data uh, regarding population in the district and that includes uh, the age structure of the resident population, the ethnic breakdown, as well as other um, household characteristics. And then the last one, non-public school enrollment, and where it um, applies also charter school enrollment, see if there are any um, changes there that would impact our district enrollment. Then we look at um, enrollment in the district. Uh, we analyze trends over the past 10 years. 
with an emphasis on the most recent three to five years. Um, part of that analysis includes um, analyzing migration patterns, rate to rate migration patterns. Uh, that's where we look at um, changes uh, as a cohort moves from a particular grade in one year to the following grade in the next year. And does the district tend to gain, maintain, or lose students as a cohort moves um, from one grade to the next? And from that, we develop migration ratios that are used to uh, develop enrollment, grade level enrollment projections. And then the last one there, the birth persistence analysis. This is where we analyze uh, kindergarten enrollment um, compared to the number of births five years prior. And from that, we develop uh, kindergarten birth ratios that are used to develop kindergarten um, projections. Uh, these are just some of the resource, research sources that we utilize. Uh, a big one, of course, is the Census Bureau, but also the State Education Department, the New York State Department of Health, the Office of Real Property Services, all the way down to the school district level um, and school district records. Uh, I'm also asked about the accuracy of our projections. Overall, our projections um, generally fall within a 4% margin of error. Uh, however, you should understand that there are basically three categories of projections. The first being uh, the projections that are based on students that are already enrolled in the system, which would be the most reliable. Second category would be projections based on documented birth, which is slightly less reliable. And, and then projections based on estimates of future births, which of course would be the least reliable. So although the um, study that we did includes 10-year projections, uh, this evening uh, for this presentation, I'm just focusing on the first five-year um, five projections because those, of course, um, are the most reliable. Um, once you get further out past that, uh, the projections become less reliable. Uh, first, we'll take a look at the demographics within the district. Uh, this slide shows you uh, the popula population, uh, the number of residents living in the district, and from 2000 through 2020, you can see that the population, the population has remained stable. Uh, this slide shows you the changes to the age structure of the resident population. Um, and there have been some changes here. If you look at the first line, the under five, that's the preschool um, segment. Uh, that has declined that in 2007% of residents were of preschool age compared to approximately 5% in 2020. Um, there was also a loss of the school age seg in the school age segment, which in um, 2000 represented 23.6% of residents. By 2020, that had dropped down to 18.2% of residents. If you go down below, however, uh, the 65 and older, the senior population, it, um, you can see there's been significant growth there from approximately 11% in 2000 to nearly 19% in 2020. And these changes are reflected in the median age within the district, which has grown from 43.2 years in 2010 to 45.8 years in uh, 2020. And that compares to uh, the median age in Westchester County, which is 41.1 years. Uh, this shows you uh, birth uh, within uh, Westchester County. Um, as in, and in Westchester County, as in just about every other county, births have been declining. Uh, over the 20 year period, 2000 to 2020, there's been a decrease of 20%. Uh, this shows you births within New York County School District. Um, as you can see, there's not an overall declining trend, but um, a fair amount of fluctuation. 
in 2007, births peaked with 214 births recorded that year, and that dropped down in 2012 to 142 births. And then since that time, you can see that births have fluctuated from approximately 159 up to 197 births each year. Next, we'll take a look at housing. This shows you rates of housing turnover from 2010 through 2022. During this period, housing turnover was at the lowest level in 2011, with 119 units sold that year. Subsequently, housing turnover has fluctuated roughly within 210 up to 260 units each year. This slide shows you proposed housing in the district. I've kept these two projects of 20 or more units. Most of theirs shown on this slide, there's a total of 309 units. However, almost two-thirds of those are either senior units or, as they're termed, senior-friendly units. So overall, these new developments are not expected to produce significant numbers of school-aged children. As far as housing turnover in the district, this shows you median prices, which as you can see have been on the increase from a low of $380,000 in 2012 up to $635,000 in 2022. This is just one household characteristic that is somewhat significant. That would be the percentage of households with children under the age of 18. And if you look at Westchester County in 2000, 36.6% of households had children of that age, and that dropped down to 33% by 2020. There was a more significant drop in the New York County School District, which in 2000, 46.5% of households had children under the age of 18. By 2020, that had dropped down to approximately 31% of households. Next, we'll take a look at enrollment. This shows you enrollment within Westchester County for the period of 2012 through 2022. And during that period, there has been an enrollment decline of 6.6% or approximately 9,600 students. This shows you the enrollment trend within the York County School District, and there's a different trend line here. Enrollment peaked in the district in 2012 with more than 3,600 students. There were then enrollment declines during the next couple of years. However, in recent years, enrollment has remained relatively stable. In fact, between 2016 and 2022, overall, there has been no change. For the next five years, we are projecting an increase of 132 students, or almost 4%. This shows you kindergarten enrollment, historical and projected. During the last 10 years, kindergarten enrollment ranged within 176 to 260 students. During the next five years, projections indicate there will be 231 to 253 students enrolled each year. This slide shows you the changes during the historical period by grade configuration. 
and during the first half of the historical period, 2012 to 2017, there was a loss of 173 students. However, during the latter half of the historical period, enrollment remained relatively stable. The lot with an increase of 87 students in the primary grades and small losses in the other grade configuration. During the next five years, again, we're projecting a gain, a total gain of 132 students with small gains in the primary grades, also gains in the middle and intermediate grades, and a small loss in the secondary grades. Some factors that have impacted district enrollment. On average, the district gained students in transition to most grades. That would be grades 1 through 7, 9, and 12. Maintenance is recorded in transition to grades 8 and 10, and average losses are recorded to 11th grade. And another factor is that the average cohort during the period of kindergarten cohorts during the period of 2012 to 2017 was 211 students. The average during the period of 2017 to 22 was 233 students. And the average projected kindergarten cohort for 2022 through 2027 is 245 students. So just to quickly summarize, the district recorded a loss of 173 students during the first half of the historical period. However, enrollment has remained stable during the last five years with a loss of 15 students between 2017 and 2022. A gain of 132 students, or 3.9%, is projected by 2027. Small gains are projected in the primary, intermediate, and middle grades, while a small loss is expected in the high school grades. So I'll be happy to answer questions. Any questions you may have? I'll just give a little context here as well. And Barbara, thank you for that presentation. With regard to this presentation, the focus, she may not, but the community can. With regard to this presentation, the focus is. Could you possibly move closer to a microphone? That's OK. I'm saying this for the community, not so much for Barbara. So just for context for the community, this speaks purely from a quantitative perspective in terms of how many children we will expect to have over K through 12. What this doesn't speak to is the growth of programs that we've offered. So when we couple what I'm seeing, the 132 students projected, and again, I don't know. One of the questions, Brian, that we'll ask is, did we include backfilling of senior housing? If there's senior-friendly housing that's part of the developments, if a senior citizen were to move from their home to the new developments, was there any consideration of backfill? We'll come to that question in a moment. But when we combine the 132 students with the programmatic changes that we've made for every 812 class we offer, for every 1211, for every engineering program, or aeronautics program, or science research program, or robotics program that we offer, those are classroom spaces that are impacted. So this presentation focuses solely on the quantitative aspect with regard to how many students we can expect over a five or 10 year period. The other part of this conversation certainly has to be the programmatic demands on our space. And when the two of those factors converge, it really does result in a space crunch specifically at, Crump, at Mohansic and Brookside. So those are just some of the considerations as, as we present this information to you. I just wanted to qualify the presentation with the reality that this tells part of our story, which is enrollment, and that's an important part. The other part are programs that we offer for our students that also require space. So. Can we ask for the back question? Yeah, Brian, with regard to So 
one of the questions from the development we have had federal council that we are the current um, in the county that may be available for that fill up? That is a question that um, I'm often asked, and there is uh, really uh, no way to estimate that what we call trickle down impact. Um, and also, um, I think you have to bear in mind that all of the, the new senior housing within the district is not necessarily being um, purchased or occupied by current residents. You know, those uh, senior developments could be pulling from uh, various surrounding communities. Um, so, but again, there, there is really, um, unfortunately, there is just no way to um, uh, develop um, you know, a triple, what the trickle-down impact would be from that. Um, Lisa, did you have any questions? Not on this study, no. Cheryl? Yes, I have a question. Um, um, Brian's going to... Oh, Brian, can you um, pass along the question? I see that we have a gain of 132 students. It's projected by 2027, primarily in the younger grades, but we're seeing a small loss in the higher grades. What is that attributable to? It's somewhat attributed to that earlier loss of um, students and early in the historical period. Um, that there were smaller cohorts in there, um, and now as those smaller cohorts are moving up into the higher uh, grades, that's why. Um, and and now some of the kindergarten uh, classes, you know, cohorts are. Are a little bit larger, so that's why you're seeing, um, you know, more gains in the uh, in the lower grades as opposed to the higher grades. You know, eventually that will even out as um, you know, in your uh, moving forward as those bigger cohorts uh, again move up through the system. Okay, thank you. Rashmi, did you have a question? Yeah, uh, Brian, would you ask, um, how does this compare to what uh, they're seeing in our surrounding districts? Uh, there were a couple of months that were very close to us. Uh, how does this data compare to the data you're seeing in the neighboring districts? There were a couple of uh, districts in the neighboring districts. Uh, yes, um, there were a varies, of course, uh, quite a bit uh, based on the demographics of each individual district. However, overall, um, I'd say general as a generalization, in most districts, um, enrollment is still declining. We're not seeing the significant decline in most cases that we were seeing that five, six, seven years ago. But in general, I'd like again as a generalization. Um, most districts are not seeing increases at this point. Mike? You're welcome. So, I mean, I have a lot of questions, but I'll stick with one. Um, if, if I'm understanding the, the data correctly, it looks like uh, births both in Westchester and, and our district uh, have trended downward in the last, even just call it five years. It looks like the housing turnover is pretty flat. And yet we had a significant increase in kindergarten age students uh, entering the district. So what would what, what might that be attributed to? Good luck. Go ahead, What could that possibly be attributed? No. The live birth were down. was flat. Um, no. Yeah, in the recent year, the housing turnover seemed flat. And the birth rates. Birth rates down. And birth rates were down. Oh, you mean uh, the last, like, for 2022? Uh, past five years. For the past five years, yeah. Okay. Um, well, it's fluctuated. Of course, you had a, a peak in um, 2016. Um, but it's fluctuated. And of course, you. 
it's hard to directly correlate the housing turnover to enrollment in a particular year. In other words, you may have a bump in a certain year, but maybe those, maybe it's young families who just have toddlers or haven't yet had their first child. So in some cases, you may not see that bump in enrollment until two, three years later when those toddlers maybe age up into kindergarten age or several years later if a young couple is pregnant when they move in, it would be five years later that you would see that. So like I said, it's tough to draw a direct correlation between a peak and a valley in the housing turnover and actual enrollment in that particular school year. That answers your question. Sort of. I guess another way to think about it is, does any of this data suggest that there's more people per household perhaps that were, you know, that maybe they didn't move, but there's more people in the household now. Is that possible? Could this data possibly suggest that there are more people per household due to each other? No. That's what I'm trying to get to. Right. Average household size. Hold on, I'm trying to find the most recent data here. Okay, the average household size in 2000 was uh, three people. Uh, in 2010, it was 2.9. And in 2020, it was 2.84. So the average household size has been uh, decreasing within the district. Catalina, do you have any questions? No, you're good. Okay. Um, so your your survey only looked at um, your data is only showing developments of twenty housing units or more. Uh, there's a lot of building going on. So how are we accounting for all of the other three and four and five housing developments going on around town? Um, we did um, list that in the um, proposed study. Um, I did not list every single one, and, and you know, for um, for simplicity, I just I kept it to the larger uh, um, developments. Um, but we did look at at all of that, um, and we did uh, run an analysis on what the projected student yield could possibly be. Um, we did that using uh, what's called the um, Rutgers yield formula, which is um, not our formula. That's the uh, formula that's standard to the industry. And uh, uh, I'm trying to see if it with me. Um, I believe we came up with that there could possibly be, and again, these. Um, Yeah, it came up with that there could possibly be a total um, 
student yield of approximately forty eight students and that's from all the little single family home group that might be being built in a district along with the larger projects however i i do question you that that student yield projection is very speculative and it's uh... we're not always terribly confident in the accuracy of these projected student yields however uh... again most of the the new housing from what was reported to us by the municipality is really uh... more senior oriented so therefore there is not expected to be a tremendous number of students entering the district from the new housing any other questions i have one go ahead so i'm still trying to solve my problem my my math brain is not satisfied yet so if the average household size has stayed the same but we had a pretty significant increase in enrollment do we have any data on i understand we're looking forward at developments and whatnot do we have any data on the number of units that were added in the last five or ten years Yeah. So is there any way she can get us that number? Is there any way for you to provide us that number? Not tonight, doesn't it be tonight? Uh, I, I'm sorry, say that first part again? Can we be able to provide us that number? Not this exact number. We could contact um, the uh, town of York Camp and um, if they could provide that for us, they should be able to. Sometimes the towns are not always um, terribly receptive to our requests, but we can certainly try. Thank you. So you would like to know how many units were completed uh, within the district within the last five years? Yes, please. Okay. Um, we will um, make a note to... Um, contact them and, and I will tell them that that was a request from the district so hopefully um, we will get a um, timely response shall I say. Thank you. Any so, um, who should I direct this to? Um, Dr. Hatter. Lisa, or Lisa? Response to Lisa. Superintendent Coleman. Uh, yes. Thank you. Lisa Fowler. Thank you. 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 We're all good? All right, we're good. Thank you. Thank you for the questions at this moment. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. If you don't have any further questions, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Ron, are you done with your superintendent's update? Okay. Can I ask some questions about the pre-K program? Um, so um, is the pre-K program at French Hill going to require some construction of the building? And if so, will that be ready in time for the fall? Yeah, so we're still waiting. We anticipate that the building will be ready. We're waiting for the licensors to come in. The licensing product, pro, uh, process for YMCA or for any daycare or preschool provider, private preschool provider, takes about three months or so and every bit of three months so we're waiting to hear from the licensors from the fire inspectors i do anticipate there will be something that needs to be done and once we're aware of what it is that needs to be done in order for a license to be issued we'll certainly alert the board and any financial considerations we'll discuss one of the things that we are aware of that we'll need to do is put a fence around one of the um playgrounds in the back to make sure that that's enclosed for safety reasons that is not a large number that's something that we can do within our operating budget with uh, without great uh, strain 
but as if there is something that does come up, I do believe the building is in good shape and ready to operate as, as a school. Fortunately, the technology needs are not such in that we don't need to put smart boards and, and uh, devices into the classroom, so we won't have a cost that comes in with that. We had a lot of furniture that was being stored there anyway that we were using during COVID. So there's a lot of furniture with, in the way of tables and chairs that we'll just have to shorten to their lowest height and be able to implement those, deploy those. There will be some tidying. So I haven't yet assessed, right now some of the rooms are wrestling rooms. Once we pull those up, I haven't assessed the floor at that point, so there may be some flooring, which again is not a very big project. We just pop down those tiles and it, it's quite quick. But again, once we have feedback from the licensor and what they're looking for to issue the license for YMCA, I'll certainly report back with whatever alterations they recommend. Thank you. Bryce. Okay. Sorry, can we just clarify that please? The the building is can get up to a pre-K level relatively quickly. However, if we had to make it a elementary school or something else, we're talking about a lot of Without a doubt, the, right? yes, okay. it, to, to, to convert French Hill to a district operated elementary school would take millions and millions of dollars to do. We're talking about a program that does not need any technology. We're not providing the same security infrastructure. It, it's essentially a pre-K program. We will have the locking doors with the key swipes that we already have. We don't have transportation coming through, so the infrastructure and the parking lots are, are not anything that we need to do. There's no school lunch program, so we don't have to address anything with the servery or the kitchen area. There, there would be every bit also even the sizes, the physical sizes of the classroom. When we idled the building, there were certain requirements that were grandfathered in. As we reopen the school, there are new SED regs, not new, but they're the newest SED regs that we'll have to meet that look at class sizes for pre-K or kindergarten classrooms if it's an SED program, which anything that we house and, and is part of our district would be. We're subcontracting this program out. It's in partnership with or in conjunction with the YMCA. So it's yes, it's our program, but we're contracting the program out to a third party private provider. So yes, if we were to turn it into an elementary school, the investment would be measured in millions. Just to be clear, just because we're not doing any upgrades, this is a very safe, clean, operable building. Absolutely, just without a sure doubt. And I think the question more focused on alterations yeah. that needed to be done that, that um, of course, we'll clean the facility yeah. and if there's carpeting that needs to be changed and flooring that needs to be changed, we'll address that without a doubt. The, the size of the classrooms are about 750 to 880 uh, square feet with more of them being on the 880 side. So. Yeah, there, there's plenty of room okay. for the program, and we do have existing furniture. It's not the newest furniture, but but we do have existing right. furniture that is available for the program. Thank you. All right, we go. Are right, we going to go to board action items? Can I have a motion to approve the minutes of the May 8th and May 16th meetings? I move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Can I have a motion to approve the treasurer's report for April 2023? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? A motion to approve the claims audit report for April 2023? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? A motion to approve the cla extra classroom report for April 2023? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Our annual meeting date, whereas the New York State Education Law requires that the district's annual organizational meeting be held on the first Tuesday in July, unless the Board of Education by resolution designates another date for the meeting within the first 15 days of July, therefore be it resolved that the Board of Education de designates July 10th, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. as the date and time for the annual organizational meeting. So moved. So moved. Second. Discussion. The only reason for this is the first um, meeting date would be July 3rd, and we just thought people were probably going to be away for the 4th of July. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Can I have a motion to approve the Board of Education meeting calendar for the 23-24 school year? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, under policies, we have a first reading on the following policy. 
4513, which is library materials selection. Does anybody have any questions or comments? No. Nope. No? Okay, we will move on. Under personnel, upon recommendation of the superintendent, a motion that the following be approved. Under certified personnel, we have appointments, part-time temporary appointments, the extended school year program for the summer 23. Uh, I'm going down. We have middle school summer program with the K-5 summer program, additions to the substitute list, an unpaid leave of absence, a removal from the substitute list, and some resignations for purpose of retirement. We also have some additional resignations under classified personnel. We have civil service appointments, extended school year program, additions to the substitute list, removal from the substitute list, and a change in stipend. So moved. Second. Discussion, Ron, did you want to say anything? I do. I do. I just want to take a moment to acknowledge some of the resignations that that are coming through. There, at least two, have moved, and we wish them well in their move. I, I I know one has been just so wonderful in her time here at the middle school. She's moving to Pennsylvania, relocating with her husband for his employment. I assured her that if she ever wants to come back to Yorktown. Uh, we'll be waiting here with open arms, and, and some of our colleagues have moved on to take uh, roles on the college level, instructing on the college level, and that's wonderful. So for the two staff who are moving out of state, we wish them well. For the staff members who are moving on to other employment opportunities, whether it's on the college level or advancement of their career, we wish them well. We're happy for them. Yorktown will always be home for them, and it, it really has been an honor to work with such talented professionals. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Under the business office, a resolved upon recommendation of the superintendent, the president of the Board of Education of Yorktown Central School District is hereby authorized to approve the agreement with Steve Robbins CPA for claims auditing services for the 23-24 school year at an hourly rate not to exceed $95. So moved. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, a motion to approve the agreement with Tobin and Company for internal auditing services for the 23-24 school year in the amount of $15,500. So Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? A motion to approve the finance manager renewal pricing for the 23-24 school year in the amount of $34,259 pending receipt of insurance documents. So Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? A motion to approve the following Yorktown High School overnight trips. Uh, one is to the ice comp competition in Dallas, and the other is the Rochester Institute of Technology for the Genius Olympiad. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? A motion to approve the budget transfers that are listed below? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Tax warrant resolved upon recommendation of the superintendent. The board approves a tax warrant notification for the 23-24 school year to the towns of Yorktown, Cortland, and Newcastle in the amount of $84,512,000, calculated as follows, and it's listed below. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Universal Pre-K resolved upon recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education of the Yorktown Central School District. Hereby accepts a proposal submitted by the YMCA of Central and Northern Westchester to operate Yorktown Central School District's Universal Pre-Kindergarten Program for the 23-24 school year, and be it further resolved that the President of the Board of Education is hereby authorized to execute an agreement with the YMCA pending review by the district's attorney and receipt of required insurance documents. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Go ahead. Just uh, thank you for that. I, I do want to share that while the board, and I appreciate the board awarding this RFP to YMCA, we did reach out to all of the larger preschool and daycare providers in town. That was our first route where we sent the RFP to half a dozen, dozen providers within our town to see if they were interested in running our pre-K program. We received responses from two other providers and both providers, even when added together, did not provide us with the number of seats that the YMCA were willing to take. Both providers provided maybe two, three classrooms worth of students, and we want to be able to offer this program to anyone who wants a program. So I just wanted to make certain that our community was aware that we did reach out to many of the providers in town. In fact, um, anyone who's on our, our transportation list that has a 
structure, a, a commercial structure, we did reach out to. So I just wanted to make sure that our community was aware of that, that we tried to go within Yorktown first. Thank you for clarifying. Uh, special Ed, a motion arranged the placements as of May 22nd, 2023. So moved to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye opposed? Uh, gifts, grants, and donations. A motion accept with gratitude the following gifts, grants, and donations at Brookside. $1,386 in the Brookside PTA for the first grade field trip to the Hudson River Museum. And the admission tickets for the second grade field trip to the Maritime Aquarium from the Brookside PTA. At Yorktown High School catering for the Science Research Symposium from the Science Research Parent Foundation. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? We are up to board comments. Lisa. Uh, first, welcome, Catalina. Thank you. We're glad to have you here. Um, and second, uh, tenure night is a great night, right? I mean, it really is seeing all these professionals starting their journey with Yorktown um, School District. And I particularly love the way um, all of the school communities turn out for them. I mean, the room, you guys can't see it, but the room was packed before. Um, with everyone from the school coming to support them and that's really a wonderful thing and especially the middle school and the high school they come with such spirit every time there's something going on for them um, so I really do appreciate everybody coming for that and congratulations to everyone. Cheryl? Uh, I, I echo what Lisa has said definitely uh, a big welcome to Catalina we're glad to have the seat filled um, mm -hmm. And I, just to talk about tenure tonight, I, one of the things I'd like to say is about three or four years ago, all of these staff members chose us, and we thank them for choosing us because we are blessed and very lucky to have their talent, their work ethic, and their dedication to our students. So thank you to them, but also congratulations to them. Rashmi? Uh, yes, I, I echo what Charlotte and Lisa said. Congratulations to everyone who uh, obtained tenure tonight. Um, What's special about this group is that they stuck with us through COVID, uh, which is one of the hardest uh, years uh, in the teaching profession. So uh, thank you and uh, congratulations to them. Um, welcome, Catalina. Thank you. And uh, thank you to the uh, community for voting yes to our budget. Um, and it's great to have a full board again. Looking forward to it. Mike? Um, just echo everything that uh, everyone said already. Welcome aboard, Catalina. Um, thank you to the community um, for supporting our budget. This is one of our more challenging uh, budget years, uh, but we feel we did a very good job, and it was nice that the community acknowledged that. Um, standing room only tonight, which was uh, uh, really good to see, and it was uh, especially a nice night to uh, continue having uh, having the current staff members continue with us now uh, under the tenure process. So very, very exciting. Catalina? I want to thank my fellow board members and the Yorktown Central School District. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to have to learn the mic. Um, I just want to thank my fellow board members and the Yorktown Central School District. Um, I'm honored to be given this opportunity to serve um, as a board of education member. And tonight, being a teacher was very special watching um, everybody from the Yorktown Central School District um, award a tenure and they bring value to our community and we thank you. Terrific. Um, so welcome Catalina. I think we've already said it to you but welcome. We're excited to be working with you. Um, tenure night is a really really special night and it is so exciting and this is just the beginning of the happy celebrations we have for the next few meetings so that's wonderful. And he also, um, we can't get to an election without thanking Yvette, who is a rock star when it comes to running elections. She should give a master class. She is so good at it. So thank you. It's a long day, and it is amazing what you do. So thank you very much. Ron, Lisa? OK. So we have, um, we're up to public comment, and we have people signed up to speak. So I am going to read my little speech before we call people up. So. Although state law does not require us to hold a public comment period, we have chosen to do so because we believe it is crucial for us to hear from our community members about their concerns and issues. Please note that the board is here to listen. The public comment period is not designed to be a discussion. Accordingly, please do not expect the board to respond to your concerns or questions tonight. The speakers were asked to sign up the appropriate sign-up sheet with your name and address. If it's not legible, I won't be able to call on you, but I will try. Our policy 1230, 
Public participation at board meetings clearly states that we do not allow discussion involving or using the name or situation of individual district personnel or students. Anyone who speaks in violation of our policy will immediately give up their right to continue to speak. Speakers are expected to conduct themselves in a civil manner. Anyone using abusive or inflammatory language, using offensive language, or in any way causing a disruption will give up their right to speak. Members of the audience are expected to maintain civility and respect for the views of others. We do not allow calling out, clapping, or disruptions from the audience. We will be tracking each speaker's time, and towards the end of your three minutes, we will warn you to conclude. If you fail to abide by the three-minute speaking time, we will turn off the microphone. Mike, you're counting time? Okay. Our first speaker is Silky. I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time reading names. Hello, my name is, yes. Hello, my name is Silka, and um, I'm a senior at Yorktown High School. Uh, I found out today that I lost my guidance counselor, who also happened to be the advisor of a school club that I'm part of. When I first heard the news that he had resigned, I felt sad and confused. He had been my guidance counselor for only a year, but I've known him since I was a freshman when I joined the club. During COVID, I enjoyed tuning into the club meetings and listening to the discussions and debates. Some days, um, there would be passionate conversations. Other days, we would hear about the college application process and valuable life advice in general. When school started up again, we started more hands-on projects. We put together and designed poster boards to set up along the track for our steps to accept. And this year, we've been working on the Kappa Space Project, where we take pictures of the Yorktown community for a photo gallery. The time I spent in club with my peers and teacher advisor is and will be an important part of my high school experience. During the time this person was my guidance counselor, I felt very supported. When I was struggling and considering dropping a difficult class, he would not let me. He gave me the resources to help with studying, and I ended up surprising myself with the score on my final exam. He was only ever he had only ever made me feel valid and confident in myself. He helped me get through the college process alive. He was a great guidance counselor and club supervisor. I will miss him a lot, and the school will not be the same without him. Thank you. Thank you. Bill? Hi, my name is Bill. I'm actually Silka's father. Uh, we are profoundly saddened and deeply disappointed that YHS has lost a fine guidance counselor and educator today. Not only was he a great counselor for our, our student and our family, helping us through the college admissions and college financial appeal processes, both of which were successful, not only has he been a role model and mentor for our student and many others, the faculty mentor for the Alliance for Broad Diversity Club, of which our student has been a member throughout her time at YHS. Uh, not only is he someone who has been subjected to some really scary public attacks and yet continues to do his job I'm and sorry, show up. We can't uh, make comments that will identify an, an employee in the district. That's, that's part of our policy, so you have to be very careful with your words. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, that's, that, that's okay. I mean, I just, it's, it's somebody that we find will be sorely missed. We feel that, that there has been, uh, it's, it's not a great decision. We just, we think that the, the uh, Yorktown Central School District really dropped the ball on this one. Thank you. Thank you. Katie? Hello, hi there. My name is Katie Schmidt Fader. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to all of you for the amazing work you do. I mean, we so appreciate it. The time you spend here, um, clearly taking the time to make wonderful things happen in our district. And um, it was also wonderful to watch the uh, tenure um, 
celebration this evening. Um, and to hear such wonderful words, Dr. Hatter, you took the time to speak so eloquently about each teacher and each staff member and what they contributed. And um, that was wonderful to see. My husband's a public school teacher, and I appreciate that. Um, however, uh, I did want to come to speak because, well, two things came to my attention while watching that. Um, if I were a leader in this district, and as a parent in this district, I would be sorely disappointed in the lack of diversity I did see in the teachers that were tenured this evening. Um, I find it kind of disappointing and heartbreaking. Um, so I do hope that that is something this district continues to strive for. It's very important. Every student has a right to see themselves represented um, culturally, racially, in every way, shape, and form, and that's very, very, very important. So I'm looking at each one of you because I really, really, really want Yorktown to strive to do better in that area. Um, my notes I did have on my phone, my phone died during that presentation <laughs> about um, the um, quantitative um, population. Uh, you know, I don't know who ordered that study, and obviously it's about making sure we have the facilities correct facilities for our population as it grows, and that's very important. But I noticed, and this is probably because it wasn't part of the RFP, but nothing was mentioned about the cultural or diversity makeup of our district. And that is very important for us to consider as we move forward as well, that every child is being represented, is being heard, and I know, I know this district does strive for that, but I'm just going to keep reinforcing that and keep, keep keeping it at the front of your head um, not letting it fall back, not letting us go to what is easy. I have been a leader of an organization, and I know sometimes it's not easy to step up and say, yes, this has to be important to us. I have been in that position where I have had to tell my board of directors, this is important, we need to make this a priority. Um, so in that regard, um, I do want to say that I know many, many parents were disappointed that um, there was a valued counselor who did leave the district. I would like to ask, I know you can't respond to me, but perhaps somebody could respond to me by mail or email, um, what is what the public is allowed to know about that departure. I know you have to be very careful with HR and all that, but I would just like to know what the public is allowed to know. And I know we can't identify, but um, there can be the appearance of impropriety and injustice. And I don't want our district to be ever accused of that. I don't want our district to ever be accused of impropriety or injustice. And for that reason, uh, I think there needs to be some clarity about the situation. Um, is that, that, was, the, that the end of my minutes, time? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Katie. Paula? Thank you, good evening. My name is Paula Yakut, and I have um, two boys currently in the district. My phone did not die, so I have my notes. <laughs> um, one, Mrs. Horitz and I sort of had a, a, a laughing matter together when, well, it was a beautiful, amazing evening. Um, none of them looked like her, and none of them looked like me. And I would just encourage us to have more people that look like Mrs. Horowitz and that look like me even though I, I am white, but I do have a hijab on. Um, just because I do, I, like Katie said, I think it's important that we draw people that are different than us, because if we keep people, having people that are the same as us teaching in our district, it's going to create more problems, especially when we get to the high school level, in my opinion, that you know people are going to be like, oh, well, you know, I'm... I'm superior and I'm not, and there's going to be some racial tensions. We already sort of have that at the high school level. We have a little group that calls themselves the Mafia, um, and that shouldn't be. It should just not be happening in our district because we're better than that. So what can we do to be more attractive to more people to apply to our district? That's my question. I know you can't answer it, but I would urge you to think about it as we're doing um, interviews and things for, for the future. Um, that's number one. Number two is Eid. Eid is, there's two Eids. 
and I'm not going to talk about the second one because it's really hard to, to deal with on some level, but um, Eid for the, for the Muslims in our district, and we do have Muslims in our district. We have Muslims from all over, um, you know, very diverse group of Muslims in our district that go to Yorktown Central School District and they attend um, HVICC in Mohegan Lake. So Eid next year starts on March 11th and Eid is on April 10th. So if we could have Eid off, like that would be amazing. I'm not asking so much for that. I mean, it would be amazing if this district could honor that like other districts are in Westchester County. Um, at the minimum, at the minimum, nothing should be scheduled that day. Nothing should be scheduled that day in any of our schools, no sports, no nothing. Because it makes our kids feel less. They can't have the day off and you schedule stuff. So I couldn't go to Brooklyn with my family like I wanted to because my son had a baseball game in Lakeland, which is another huge district of Muslim kids. Okay, number three, safety at the high school. Um, the candidates night, I heard over and over and over again how the teachers need to feel safe and the safety of our teachers. Well, let me tell you, this year my son, one of my sons, has had a huge issue with safety at the high school. They're aware of it. I don't need any phone calls. They're, they're well aware of what's going on with my kid. Um, Somers has a decent model at their high school where they have someone monitoring the cameras and the, the, of kids going into the bathrooms. If there's an issue, it's taken care of immediately not having someone to report it, not having someone to look back on it. Um, you know, m my kids won't go to the bathroom. They leave at 7.30 in the morning and they don't go to the bathroom until two o'clock or 1.40 when they walk off the bus. I know I'm at time, right? Yeah. Um, okay, um, mental health of athletes and the fine arts. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, no, we're done, okay. Um, Ron, can you just address two things? One is um, diversity hiring, and the other is why the demographic study was only about enrollment. Sure. In terms of diversity hiring, we do participate in at least one, if not two, diversity job hiring fairs. That's not something I, I'm not sure how well aware our community is, but we do participate in um, those job hiring fairs, which are regional, so it's more concentrated for we, Westchester County, Rockland County, Putnam County, I'm not sure many Putnam County schools participate, but lots of Westchester schools do. So those are some of the steps in terms of outreach to some of the schools. Those are some of the steps that we take, but we do participate in job hiring fairs. It takes place on a Saturday. We spend a good part of our administrative team. Dr. McGinnis actually organizes the event for us, and I thank her for doing that because it is a priority. And a large group of our administrative staff give up their Saturdays to participate in this event. And we meet as many people as possible. I think I met the last time 22 people, and sometimes they materialize into interviews, and sometimes they don't materialize into interviews. But we certainly go through the process faithfully and then with the intent of recruiting and hiring candidates who will make our district better. Um, I believe Mr. Rosen participates in that event as well, and I'm there, and Ms. Ammerling is there, and we have some of our building principals who participate in the event. So we have a large representation from Yorktown participating in the hiring events. Um, so those are some of the steps, and I'm happy to discuss further what, um, what more can be done. With regard to the study, this study is purely from a needs at a space and a square foot standpoint, and it doesn't really extend beyond space. So we had our architects present at the last Board of Education meeting looking at capacity of our schools. And now understanding what the trajectory of the enrollment is will help to inform their work as they look at renovations, at additions. We share with them the programmatic goals. But this really was more of a quantitative study to understand what the numbers are in terms of students at each level. And then we're working with the architects, with, like I said, for capacity. I, I hope I answered both questions that you asked. Yep. And then as far as the personnel issue, we cannot discuss personnel, and, and that's not something this board will do. And, and we apologize, but we just won't do it. Um, that's it? All right. Didn't give up? OK. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Good night, everyone.